Hey everyone, Dave Durante here at Power Monkey headquarters with another video for you. Today we're going to be working on our ring swing. All right, it's an area that most people neglect. They get right into those kipping muscle ups. They get right into those more advanced movements without taking the time to really understand how to create a proficient swing. So let's get right into it. Now the easiest fix for most people on getting a ring swing to be better utilized is to actually start directly underneath the rings. Now this might seem like something fairly obvious, but even a couple inches back or a foot or two feet back behind the rings will create a secondary swing. This is something that we do not want to see. We do not want to create something like a trapeze act after a couple of reps. It can get really aggressive. It can get really out of control unless you have a really high level understanding of what's going on and how to control that swing. I see high level athletes have this problem all the time and it trickles down to the everyday athlete as well. Don't allow yourself to be put into a bad position right from where you start. Directly underneath the rings where you don't have any additional secondary swing will give you the best opportunity to control the apparatus rather than the apparatus controlling you. The next area of focus that we want to be touching on here is where our eye line is. Now eye line and also palm direction. This is something that we normally either hear some different cues on, but ideally what we want to be thinking about here is making sure that our eye line and our palms are in the same direction as we're swinging. Now this is really important to note, the swing that we're normally utilizing within the uh, CrossFit world, someplace where we're using kipping muscle ups and smaller lower level gymnastics type movements, it does not require us to be turning or flailing out the rings very much. Right? This is normally done in the gymnastics world once our body starts to rise above the horizontal plane where we're doing things like dislocates and inlocates, where we're required to maintain pressure and tension down on the rings. Now that's a critical component here. The, the direction of the rings and the direction of your palms is always about trying to maintain pressure and tension. So for our purposes, I find it to be beneficial for just about everybody out there to make sure that the eyes are facing forward out on the horizon, that the palms are facing in the same direction so that we can maintain pressure and tension down on the rings. Now, if you are someone that is very immobile, especially in the underarm soft tissue, maybe your thoracic spine or even in your shoulder joint, and you have trouble getting to a nice uniform arch position in the back part of your swing and feel like internally rotating and pushing those palms out to the side will help get a little bit more range going. You're an athlete that probably needs to be working a little bit more on their mobility rather than compromising position and putting your shoulder into a more compromised position as you get aggressive with that swing. So take that in consideration. It might help you get a more aggressive swing, but it also might be putting more additional pressure on the shoulders. So for right now, let's stay within a swing where we can keep the uniform shapes intact from hands down through feet, nice and arched, one uniform arch, and make sure that those palms and eyes are in the same direction. All right, another easy drill here for most people is understanding what the lower half is doing. Just because you can't see your legs does not mean that it's not involved with the movement. We have to be considerate of what you can't see. So the entire body in the gymnastics world, the goal will be to make sure that the entire body is always working together in unison, in the same direction, rather than having dead weight. Again, key concept, just because you can't see your legs doesn't mean it's not involved with the movement. It normally happens in the back part of the swing. Front part of the swing, I can see my toes, it helps create good shapes. As Soon as you lose sight of those feet, they go out of the equation, legs are all over the place. One way we can help out with this is give ourselves a tactile cue. Putting something light between our heels. Put a towel, a t-shirt, a TheraBand, something light between our feet gives us the ability to stay intact. Squeezing those glutes, squeezing those adductors, making sure that the heels are intact so that we do create uniform shapes throughout what we can't see. Again, a reminder, what you can't see still matters. So giving a little tactile cue here can help make sure we maintain those shapes. All right, this last little cue here, this last little drill is going to be probably the most difficult for most of you out there, so kind of take your time with it. And it has to do with the front part of the swing. Most of the time, uh, there's not enough consideration taking into that the swing is a skill in and of itself. And we need to spend some time just basically bettering the swing before we apply it to any pulling actions. Kipping muscle ups, front up rises, back up rises, whatever it might be, the swing needs to be perfected first before it can be applied to something higher level. So what I mean by this in terms of what I normally see with the everyday athlete is they start pulling before we've perfected the swing. Front part of the swing happens. What we're trying to achieve here is a curved shape. Now a general comment that I like to use when it comes to dynamic action, help understand this concept is that straight lines and curved shapes are our friend and angles are our enemy. Now what I mean by that is angles have a tendency to lead to slack. And slack is something that we do not want ever. 
Slack leads to less efficient movement, but it also leads to a lot of stressing of the joints unnecessarily. In, instead of slack, the opposition to slack is tension. So we want to see if we can create good tension in the front part of the swing. So what most people are doing is they're anticipating the next part of the movement which hasn't happened yet. They've anticipated the turnover. So instead of thinking about pulling down in the front part of the swing, engaging those lats, anticipating the pull that hasn't happened, we want to be thinking about keeping that shoulder angle nice and open, eventually be thinking about actually pulling slightly back on the rings, but instead, if this is someone, uh, something that is actually giving you problems, instead of thinking about pulling back on the rings for right now, just think about keeping an open shoulder. In fact, try not to pull down. That'll be an easier cue for you rather than thinking about doing the opposing action on pulling back. As we get more proficient with just keeping that shape nice and open through the shoulder, we can get more aggressive about pulling back on the rings and maintaining that pressure and tension. Main concept here is to not pull down when we're working just on the swing. One additional cool exercise uh, that could help understand the pressure and tension that we want to see in the front part of that swing are these Y pullbacks. So just laying down on your back with a nice easy TheraBand. First we're going to get into a nice hollow shape which is again mimicking the front part of that swing. Hold those TheraBands right at their end points in the palm of your hands as if you were holding onto your rings. Lift those shoulders up, looking down at your toes, again mimicking the front part of the swing. And from here we're going to pull back on that TheraBand. Same idea as we'd be pulling back on the rings, trying to maintain that pressure. Go through a couple of reps here. It doesn't need to be super heavy, super tense. It's more about just feeling that engagement against the rings in the same way as what we're feeling down with the band. And you can eventually apply it to the front part of the swing on the rings. Thanks again for watching this video. Please like, subscribe. Please comment as well. We're always trying to make sure that we can get back to your comments with some good questions and answering going on. Also, send us your videos. We want to see how these progress videos are coming along and we'll make sure to give as much feedback as we can. Go check out PowerMonkeyFitness.com for more information as well.